Hello YouTube. I'm going to do a video today that I think is going to be a lot of fun. A uh, little backstory here. For years now, I mean I've been on Instagram since like 2012 and pretty much from the beginning I get the occasional message. Sometimes it's every day, sometimes it's once a week, but I get a lot of messages from people saying, hey what would you do with my hair? And then they'll send me a selfie. And most of the time when I get these messages, I don't give them much of a response. Like, I, I don't, I'm not rude about it. I just let them know, like, look, through a screen, it's really, really hard for me to advise you. And particularly in the format of replying with a message. Like, if, some, if there's some structural thing I feel could be changed with somebody's hair, it's really hard to sit there and write it out unless I pull up their picture and I add some overlay graphics and I explain this whole detailed thing. And, and then what use is that to them to take, what are they going to take it to their barber and say, here's the... The, the layout, here's the, the blueprint that Andrew gave me, follow this, like I don't want to do that. And so I usually just tell people like what I feel like I can give them through a screen and the best advice I can give them is, hey, if you're unhappy with your hair, find a better barber, which well, there's a whole topic for another video, like I'm going to talk about how to find a better barber soon, I'm still trying to collect data for that. But back to this video, already too much caffeine, I'm like getting sidetracked. So yesterday I was watching a video by Joe uh, on the, uh, from Bloomon, and he was essentially roasting people's hairstyles. He had people submit images of their bad hair, and he was just you know having a laugh um, with them about how bad their hair can be. And I noticed as I was watching it that I was doing the thing that barbers and hairdressers do, where when you look at a haircut, you instantly go, "Oh, here's what I would do." And I realized that I do kind of have that that built-in inclination to like, well, here's what I think would look good. And so while I haven't really given that through a screen much over the years because I feel like it's hard to do, I got inspired watching Joe's video and I was like, I want to do that. I'm going to have people submit photos and I want to tell them what I would do. So I put out a thing on Instagram and I said, hey, send me a selfie, send me a description of what you wish your hair would do and uh, I'll try to do a video talking about it. And so here is that video. Let's get started. If this, if this works out well, I want to do this regularly. I think it might be a lot of fun. It also might be kind of lame or boring, I don't know, but I'm just going to talk through my thought process looking at these people's hair and looking at what they want from their hair and just talk about what I might do different. So here goes the first one. Now in this image I blacked out the face because I didn't have permission from that person to use their image and I didn't, I didn't know, gray area, right? So anyways, this person says, I've had a pompadour style for a couple years, a big fan of it, but Asian swirl is always fun. So I'm assuming he has very straight hair with bad cowlicks that make it really hard for his hair to slick back. Now I do have a video where I actually take Asian hair and I flat wrap it and slick it back. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. The first thing that I notice is this guy has really good bone structure. Like his cheekbones are good, his jawline is good. He's got corners, he's got angles. There's a lot of key features to work off of here. See when, when I'm trying to figure out a haircut for somebody, I look at cheekbones, I look at the jawline, I look at where the curve on the, on the head is. Like so right here I can see his head is wide and then right up here it starts to get narrower. And that brings me to maybe something less than ideal about his features, and I hate to hate. Um, he's a better looking man than I am, but if you look at his overall shape here, his head kind of comes outward to these amazing cheekbones, and then it comes back downward. He has this kind of like diamond shape going on here. But what his hair is doing right here in this picture is accentuating that diamond. He's taking this kind of steep inward curve here and extending it further up and so it's taking his forehead that isn't necessarily tall and narrow but it's almost making it look tall and narrow so further back on his fade here you can see that the shape is really really nice it's built up right on that widest part whoever cut his hair did a great job but right in the front here I don't know if you could see this but his fade is kind of coming upward near the temple now this is a really popular style um, but if this head were in my chair, one of the first things I would do is try to talk him into bringing the front of his fade a little bit lower. Again, because his head kind of dips in pretty steeply right here. And so by leaving the front of his fade a little bit longer, we can kind of square out what otherwise came inward. It, it'll take his kind of like diamond appearance of his face and just rectangle it out a little bit there. Now on top of that, his hair on the top here it's not, he doesn't necessarily have a narrow forehead, but the way that it's styled kind of leaning inward makes it appear more narrow. To have that tall, narrow ha hair on top of a somewhat average looking forehead is kind of stretching out the appearance of that area on his head. So one thing I would probably do is cut this middle area a little bit shorter than what it is. 
and I'd leave these corners as long as possible. And while styling it, I would try to definitely fan things out to at least be vertical. The overall name of the game is I would take everything in this region that's kind of pointing inward and upward, and I would just try to spread it out and make it a little more square. Now, his hair behind the front here, the hair that we can't really see, I can only guess what's happening there. He might have two whorls, he might have one, he might have a really, really difficult cowlick, he might have weird parts and things happening back there. So what I would do in person uh, is take his wet, clean hair, comb it around, and see how much it's willing to bend and go where we want it to go. Now, he likes pompadours, so ideally, it'd be nice if we could get it to lay back. And if it was almost laying back to where, like, maybe with a whole bunch of product and a whole bunch of styling, we could make it lay back, I would point that out to him. I'd say, look, today we can make it lay back. It's going to take a lot of work. But if you want to hold out and grow out that, the, the top of your hair there for three or four more haircuts, eventually it'll lay back easily. Now, I've mentioned this in other videos, but it's a universal truth that the longer your hair is, the more easily it will bend. And so if you have crazy cowlicks and things, a lot of times it's a lot easier to temporarily fix that by just cutting everything short. If the hair's real short and it's sticking out, but it's not sticking out very far because it's really short, that's a quick fix. But it doesn't solve the problem. It just temporarily pushes it back for a few weeks until the hair starts to grow back. But by growing the hair longer, it becomes more flexible and it'll bend and lay back. And so I, I guess I would have that conversation with him. First, I would ask, would you mind if I change the shape of your fade to put a little more weight in the front here? And then I would probably not even ask him. I would just do it. I would trim the front to be a little bit more square. And I would, while styling, definitely try to keep it spread out a little more. And then regarding the back of his hair, just say, hey, do you, do you want to wait a couple haircuts to have ideally what you really want? Or do you want to just do whatever's going to work best today? And in that case, um, there might be some messier options. Like if hair's going to want to stick out and it's going to be a hell of a lot of effort to make it not stick out, a lot of times the best action is to just let it stick out. But just find a way that it's going to stick out nicely, you know, to a, to a pleasing shape. And again, that shape that I would go for here would fill in a lot of this space out here. Maybe not all the way up and out there, but a little bit more than what we have going on. Because there's this kind of flatness here and then a little bit of flatness here. And again, it just kind of gives him a little bit of a cone head that he, that he doesn't actually have. I mean, he has a very nicely shaped face there. So this person writes, what I have, blonde with bangs, versus what I really want, pixie. That's easy enough. Shortest consultation ever. So this is what she has. This is what she wants. Okay, so this one is a piece of cake. If this person walked in here with this blonde, um, kind of messy bob and said, I want a pixie, it would probably be a one minute consultation. So here's what comes to mind as I look at her and I look at her hair and I look at what she wants. Um, first of all, when somebody comes in and they have hair down to their back and they're like, I think I want a pixie that's a 20 minute consultation because they're just not sure. Even if they come in thinking they're sure, it's gonna be a long consultation. And a lot of times, you know, women will go, oh, I'm so afraid to cut it short, what if I look like a boy? The first thing I look at is, first of all, like, she has soft features, like very feminine features. And even if somebody has more angular features, it can't, the, the, the details of the cut can be made very feminine. Uh, like if you look at the goal here, it's everything's kind of soft. There's no hard lines anywhere. Like so if somebody's worried like, oh, I'm going to look like a boy, I'm not going to put any corners on it. I'm not going to put any hard lines on it. But looking at this person, what she has and what she wants, like this is going to be a piece of cake. And because her hair is already pretty short, I'm not talking her through some big, scary, crazy change. She's probably only going to lose a couple inches off the side. And truth be told, like if she did get this shorter pixie cut, and she hated it and she wanted to grow it back to her bob, that's like eight months of growth right there. Like it wouldn't be that big a deal. It's not like cutting off like three years of growth. So this would be pretty much open and closed case. I would, I would approach this haircut with a razor, both because it's quick and it's fun. And basically when you cut hair with a razor, you get that soft finish on the first pass, where if I were to do it with scissors, I would kind of put in a blunt structure and then blow dry it and then go back and texturize it. But with her hair texture and the goal that she wants there, piece of cake. Just razor cut, quick, easy. Um, another thing that I'm noticing right now is our client here, her bangs are a little bit shorter than the goal picture. 
I would definitely notice that and mention it before the haircut. I'd say, hey, look, I'll get you very, very, very close to that look, but I want you to realize that your bangs are a little bit long, shorter than hers. And so you can actually have that look on your next haircut, but today we're gonna get you pretty close to that. And a lot of times, clients might not even notice something as minor like that. If I took her hair and I cut it into this pixie and I never mentioned that her bangs are a little shorter, she probably wouldn't notice that her hair wasn't exactly like the picture. But to cover all my bases, when I see tiny little inconsistencies like that, that might be an issue maybe, like that's one thing I've learned in all my years is if you notice something small like that and you don't say it and then the client sees it later, you look like an idiot. And so I just point out every little thing and that's something I would point out here. Okay, next we have um, a fun one here. He says, so I did these on myself, but I know I need help with the back. So he didn't send me any goal pictures, but he sent me what he currently has. And so let's bring the, those up here. First thing, when you have face tattoos, head tattoos, and neck tattoos, there are no rules for your haircut. And so if I have a client that comes in looking like this, I'm not thinking like, oh my gosh, they're gonna wanna look like proper, like a lawyer or something. Guy comes in with tattoos on his face, I'm like, no rules, this is gonna be fun and free form. Looking at this haircut and thinking about what I would do with it, obviously I wanna clean up that blend there. Um, I, I am kind of a fan of choppy, messy fades at times, but I don't know, I, th I feel like I also like juxtaposition, like when something is really, really clean next to something that's not really, really clean. To me, a lot of times the difference between a haircut looking offensive to people, like they think, oh, why would you cut his hair like that? Versus like, oh, I get it, it's art. It's like if you can add in a little bit of something that looks deliberate, like a clean fade and then everything else is messy, it almost like, it makes up for breaking all the rules. Like, like it's one thing to break all the rules, but if if you want to break some rules and get away with it, you've got to follow some rules. And so I would follow a rule here and just give him like a proper kind of burst around that faded area there and just clean this up a little bit. Now I think the placement of it is actually beautiful, the way that he has it kind of in the middle of his head here. It's hard to tell in this side photo, but in this front, you can see that there's the widest part of his head. And from here, everything rolls inward. And at the same time, you can see that that's where the weight of his fade is building up. And so. That's already in the right place. I would just kind of dust over the ends there to, bl to blend that in a little bit. Now what else I would do here, I think what he's done with the corners is beautiful. That's exactly how I would take care of a receding hairline and I have a whole video about that. But I think what I would do different is I would take this hair in the middle, which is kind of on blast, it's kind of a little bit emphasized, like our attention is drawn to that little hair um, sticking out in the middle of his recession. I would take that even shorter. I would. And I would definitely diffuse the crap out of it. I mean, like break it up, like just super, super texturized, like most of his haircut is here. But I would try to take this focal point and rather than having everything point to the middle like it is, I would just try to like spread it out a little bit, have it kind of fan out almost. And then I would have literally maybe one hair sticking up. Not, not literally one hair, but literally like 16 hairs stuck together as one shard, probably like here or here. So most of it would be kind of like forward but not long enough to hang down. Some of it would be sticking up, but just kind of like broken down to pull emphasis away from the middle of his forehead there. And then along the outside areas here, if I were styling this, like see he has this accent piece, accent piece, accent piece. I think I would more strategically try to put those in some of these corners to take this roundness of his head and more or less disguise it. Like over on this side, I would give him one of these, like a palm rub, little noogie thing to try to have something kind of spurt out there and hopefully maybe fill in some of this shape to just square them up just a little bit more. Now regarding the back, which is all he asked about really, and I just took it upon myself to talk about the front of his hair here. Um, again, there's like not really any rules with a haircut like this. This is purely like, hey, what do you think looks good? Right now, it does look like he cut it himself. There's not really any shape or structure there as far as I can see, and again, I'm just looking through a screen, I can't comb through his hair to see what was actually intended. So I think the first thing I would do is take all the hair from about here upward and I would graduate it, like more like a traditional men's haircut to try to build on this weight right here. So there's some visual consistency to where this line is going to be followed all the way back here. Even if it is considerably longer back here, I would want 
this area graduated a little bit to kind of come in. Like you can actually see his hair wants to do it kind of in between these other hairs here. He's got this shape starting to go here. So I'd, I would want to emphasize that occipital slope and maybe pump some stuff up here. I think because this is already really, really short, even though I would leave the length here that could create a weight line, I would like texture eyes the crap out of it so that it didn't actually lay down and make a weight line. But I'll want the length there as though it could have been a weight line, if that makes sense. So that when it does stick out, it still emphasizes this back corner of the head. Because what we have going on with the front of the head is very, very round. And again, going back to that juxtaposition thing, like if everything here is round and it continues round back here, that's cool, but it's a little bit too predictable to me. Like I, I like to throw in just something a little not expected. And so to me, like this round shape, round shape, and then if I could put in a hard corner here, even if it is a broken, shattered hard corner, I feel like having something angular next to something round would be nice. And at the same time, by doing that, it would cause this hair that's flicking upward, it would cause it to kind of hug the head a little bit more. And so it would have like a sleeker appearance here. But then everything right at the bottom, I would texturize from the bottom up and want it to flip out kind of. I think I would also like to take some of these hairs in the corner and spread them out this way more. Um, I can't tell if there's enough length there to do that immediately, but I really like the look of long hair here starting to kind of tuck forward. And so I would absolutely try to get some of that movement in there. Maybe just get the mullet to like spread out. And as I'm working through this, I'm realizing with a lot of these haircuts or so far two of them, like that's kind of the name of the game is like everything's too bunched up. I want it spread out. I want some air in there. Okay, so this is in fact taking a lot longer than I expected. I have I think 10 or 11 sets of photos here that I plan to go through, but I think I just might go through like five of them and then save the rest for another video later. So the next one we have here, my hair is nice, but I find it quite boring. When I was a stylist, I always had brighter colors like pink. I used to wear it shorter, but as I've aged, I've developed a little under the chin pooch of fat that I try to hide with long hair and camera angles. I'm curious what you do with mine if you were my stylist with free reign. And then she says, my hair is thin, fine, and bone straight. If I, had if I had a stronger jawline, I would love to rock something edgy like Miley here. Okay, here's a thing. Um, hairstylist, barbers, you've heard this in the chair a million times. A client comes in and they go, oh my God, I have such a fat jaw. And then you look at them and you go, where? <laughs> she said camera angles. I mean, I don't know any camera angles that can hide a fat jaw that well. But... Clients constantly think, they go, oh my God, I have the roundest face. Like everybody thinks they're a Cabbage Patch doll. And everybody thinks they got a fat chin or big ears. S seriously, like these insecurities, like it's so weird when they pop up. Like somebody comes in who is, you know, an attractive person and they go, oh my God, I hate this about myself. And I'm like, why? <laughs> Anyways, um, I think the first thing I would do if she sat in my chair and said all of that is joke about come on, you don't have a fat jaw, like, just like I just did. But, you know, if, if, if it's in somebody's head that they have that, then work with it. You know, if they think they see it, then try to help them to not see it. So I think the first thing that would come to mind as far as what might work is immediate thought is maybe like a graduated bob. I don't know if she would be opposed to losing so much length, but if you want to make something appear smaller, you want to make everything else bigger. And so if you did like a, like a tasteful version of like the get me the manager haircut where it's kind of like big here and then sleek here, that could kind of make the jaw look smaller, especially if you cut it just right to where the, the line on the haircut just follows the line on the jaw. And you can take somebody who thinks they don't have a jawline and you can give them a hairline there that'll emphasize the jawline and kind of build off of it. And so like the natural angles here, you just bring them up and out into a bigger haircut. Now, that would be obviously a very drastic change for her. And then there'd be other factors involved. Like I would have to feel the back of her head. If somebody has a really flat occipital bone, it's hard to do those graduated bobs and make them look nice. Um, and so, you know, I'd feel the bones around the head and see if that worked. But at the same time, while I think it might work, I also think it might not work because if you take all this hair and you have this movement come out here down to these clean lines that point inward toward the jaw, it could also pull all of the attention to that jaw. And so depending on what her jaw looked like in real life, like if she just thought it looked fat, then graduated bob might work. But if she 
if she actually had a fat jaw, then I think I would have to like sit and look at it for a minute. Something I've even done at times is I'll take like the ends of her long hair and I'll hold her hair up and place the hair along her jaw as though it were cut there and just get a feel for what it might look like. All of that I thought before I got to the Miley part and looking at the Miley haircut actually brings up a couple other thoughts. So for one, you look at the way Miley's sitting here, that is camera angles and poses for sure. Like for all we know, Miley, might have a fat jaw, she's doing this, you know? Uh, but also, her haircut is putting all of your attention right on that jaw. Everything is like back here, and then her face is just wide open, and even the bangs are kind of pointing like toward, hey, don't look at my forehead, look at my jaw. And so that might also be kind of a bad haircut if you feel like you have a fat jaw, at least the way that it's sitting there. Another thing that might be helpful is, as I said, if you make everything else bigger, it can kind of pull attention away from the front. So maybe if I could talk her into taking off five inches and then layering it heavily, maybe not as intense as like some of the shags that people are doing these days with like the curtain bangs and the very 70s look, but just a more classic layered haircut to where if you had pieces moving and coming out everywhere and maybe a couple pieces framing the jaw, almost like a Rachel haircut, I think that might be helpful as well. It wouldn't be a super massive drastic change as doing like a graduated bob, but it would definitely take like her silhouette here, as she said, everything is very straight and fine and flat and it just lays down. Um, if you could cut in some layers and put some air in there and like texturize it in such a way and then round brush it and stuff and just get everything moving and big, I think that could definitely pull attention outward. So. Then the question is, do you want to round brush your hair every day? You know, so I don't know. I should have I should have started this one by saying I am not an expert at long hair. Like I do long hair, but it's not. It's probably one tenth of my clientele is long hair, and so I'm not as well versed in like what works and what doesn't work. To be honest, I felt a little bit vulnerable sharing it there because because it's not something I'm truly like would call myself an expert at, but it's a lot of fun anyways. Okay, so this will probably be the last one since this video is super long. Hi Andrew, here's what I got and what I want. I like 80s style full sides. Me too. Trimmed back, defined front section. My former hairdresser was given lots of opportunities. Too short on the sides, too long on top, way too long on the back, oh, that's too bad. She didn't understand the structure of the cut at all. I'm seeing a new person, older guy on Friday. Love your videos, PS your hair looks great, blah, 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 okay, thank you. Okay, um, earlier I mentioned with that pixie that I would have a one minute consultation because like, oh my gosh, fish in a barrel, like this is easy. I think this is another case like that. Um, as you can see, his hair looks really, really close to what he wants. It really needs just some fine tuning. I think the way that I would approach this hairstyle, before I shampooed it, before I got it wet, I would just comb through it to make sure there wasn't any structural problems. And it's, it's again, really hard to see through a screen, but if I were able to comb the hair out and look for crooked lines or holes or anything. I would first do that and see if we needed to take off length to maybe fix the structure at all. But for the most part, the structure looks pretty good. So what I would actually do is put a little bit of a matte product in his hair, ADH dry, honestly, and then I would blow dry it. And to blow dry it, I wouldn't use a brush. I would just use the air from the dryer to push his hair around. And I would essentially try to style it just like that picture. Now we can see that the back of his hair is actually longer than the back in the picture. Um, the, the top might be longer than what's in the picture, but I would still start off by trying to get it into that style. And along the way, what I would do is see which hairs don't wanna go where I want them. I would see which hairs are falling too heavy. And once it's styled that way, and, and oh, let me back up. The reason I wouldn't use a brush is you can see that his hair is very fine, especially in this area. If you use a brush and you introduce a whole lot of tension, you're going to make the hair really sleek and flat to the head. Now this goal picture here, you can tell is probably much more dense, thick hair. And so if I were styling this hair, I would pull it tight with a brush and get it real sleek and smooth. But for this hair to get a similar look, I wouldn't use a brush. I would just let the air push the hair around. After getting the hair styled as close to that as I could, then I would be able to assess how it needed to be cut. So I think in the back here, um, you know, straight line across the bottom, and then I would graduate this a little bit. So, mm, maybe, not a gra maybe not even like a graduation, it would probably be just straight out, just 90 degrees, but I would start off by, I would cut that line on the bottom, I'd pull the hair out and I would layer it up. Now, 
I think it's also worth pointing out too. If you look at the way his hair is currently laying, it's building up this weight here. I would absolutely try to keep a corner back there. I wouldn't take, I wouldn't take the hair and cut it so uniform straight up the back of the head that everything fell flat because even with fuller, longer haircuts, the difference between it looking amazing and looking like you just kind of need a haircut is where that weight sits. So his, his little bit of weight here, I feel is not enough. Um, and on this guy, it looks like his occipital bone might be a little bit higher. Although he does kind of have a straight up thing here. I don't know, that, that like scares me. That's such, that, that is so like early 80s and I would be really, really tempted to deviate from even what he actually wants to do what I think looks better than what he wants, <laughs> honestly. Um, and so I would leave more length and weight here and then slightly graduate it. So I don't know, maybe he would leave my chair and go, dang, it happened again. The stylist didn't do what I wanted. Um, so maybe there's a case of that happening here. I mean, if you ask for a haircut that is really far from what's common right now, because right now these are actually becoming more popular. I'm getting a lot of people asking for like the uh, Patrick Bateman haircut and these kind of 1980s looks, but every time they ask for it, they go, but like a modern version of it. And to me, adding more corners and angles, like this is straight up and down here, but adding a little bit of a bump at that occipital, I feel would just make it look a little bit better. So I don't know, maybe, maybe um, the previous hair cutter was having similar feelings and maybe that's why he's unhappy with his hair. But I think ultimately too, if I were to make that judgment and that choice to do that, before I did it, I would stop and I would point it out to him. I would turn him to the side so he could see this angle of himself and I'd hand him the mirror so he's looking at the side of his head and I would just say, hey, like I know in the picture it's more straight up and down here, but that really makes it look like 1982. Do you want to be straight up 1982 or do you want to be, do you want this corner here? And then I might even bring up pictures of, of haircuts and heads that have more of a pronounced kind of occipital bump there and give him the choice ultimately. Because at the end of the day, like I do what I think looks good, but I ultimately do what the client wants. And even if it's something that I don't prefer to do, I love trying to take something that I normally wouldn't like and do it in a way that I like it. And so that could be a perfect opportunity to do that. Um, as far as his hair hanging in the front here, go back to the styling. After I blow dried everything back, the way I would get that hair in the front to lay down is to just take a comb and flick it once. Like with hair that's falling like that, if you try to like strategically make it fall, it never looks right. But if you just take the comb and go, ah, that's when it looks right. And I think more so if you just push it back with your hands and then it happens to fall that way, that's when it looks the best. When it happens naturally, it looks amazing. So yeah, that's how I would approach this haircut. Style it out first and then just fine tune things here and there to make it proper. It would be a completely dry haircut, which I do honestly probably like. 50% of my haircuts I do completely dry. Okay, so there we have it. What was that? Five different haircuts there. Um, hopefully this video was informative, helpful, entertaining maybe even. Um, I do have like five or six more submissions that I didn't get to because this is running so long. So it looks like I'm going to be doing another one of these videos, especially if you guys like it. So if you have any questions or comments, obviously there's, you know, comment section, use it. And, and if you like this and you want more, let me know. Also like, subscribe, all of that. Thank you.